So good afternoon, welcome back to the channel. Now, a few months ago, I put a reel on my Instagram and I showed a bit of a sneak peek of this boat here. And I said, look, who is interested in finding out more about this boat? Because as you can see, she's having quite a bit of work done to her. Uh, she's a Nelson, former police boat. Uh, and the response I got was really positive. Loads of you wanted to find out more. So I've come back today uh, to speak with my friend Marcus from Dean and Holland Yacht Brokers, uh, who owns this boat, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about the project. So, Marcus, thanks for having us here today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for coming back. Uh, and as I say, I know a lot of people are interested in finding out more about it. So when did you buy her? How long have you had her for now? So we bought her in February last year. So we've had her for a, a whole year uh, and, a, and a couple of months. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, we've had productive months in that time, and we've had unproductive months. Um, it, the, the project either goes at a million miles an hour or, or zero miles an hour. So we've done a lot in that time. Yeah. Um, but at the minute, we are in the, the 1,000 mile an hour stage, I would say. Yeah, yeah, it's been a lot done since. I mean, I was last year, what, a couple of weeks ago? And yeah. And there's been yeah, yeah. loads done already. Moving very quickly. So when we bought the boat, um, she was um, she just arrived here at Sutton Boat Yard in Rochford, and she'd come down from uh, the Thames, and she'd been sat on the Thames for a number of years. We're not really sure how many but she'd been sat on a pier somewhere, left all lonely, uh, getting smashed up probably. Yeah. Um, and as a result of that, um, we, were, we were left with a really big project. Um, but I, I, you know, I bought this with my, my good friend Jack, uh, who's not here today, uh, he's at work, but um, Jack and I have got a bit of a, uh, a love affair for, for Nelson's. Yeah. Um, Nelson 34 uh, was the first boat I sold when I went into brokerage. Um, that was uh, called the Tosca that went to France and Jack had worked on that boat so it's a very special boat um, and we really do love them for, for many yeah. reasons so that's why we took it on um, but what have we done in that time well uh, first big thing we should we go for a wander down yeah let's have a look so just here yeah was one of the biggest tolls you'd ever seen it's uh, it was huge um, how it stayed afloat I don't know but that's been repaired and actually really really lucky the guy that repaired it, a wonderful guy called Anthony, uh, who's a very skilled boat builder, yeah. actually built Nelson 34s for Tylers. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, he's now in his 80s. He does a couple of days here, kind of, um, I don't know, probably to give his wife a break, bless her. But, um, <laughs> yeah, we, we felt very fortunate that he, that he did that for us because, um, number one, he's very skilled and very talented, but number two, it felt really, really cool and really right that somebody that had built Nelson's was it was was repairing it repairing i mean in terms of the workmanship on that you you would never know that there was a hole in that hole would you what kind of size was it then how big was the hole it probably went from about there to about there oh well it was yeah huge. i mean yeah it was, it <laughs> was humongous. a massive hole um and, and what one, caused it any idea what caused that it just I, been hit by something or i think it was the fact that it'd been left alongside this pier for, for years on end yeah and if anyone's ever sailed or been on a boat up the thames a small boat they'll know that uh, with all the passenger traffic on the passenger ferries, it gets very choppy, very lumpy. Yeah. Um, the, the last the last stretch, kind of when you go around the last bend and up the Tower Bridge, if you're in a small boat, that is a really horrible stretch of, yeah, stretch of water. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's just been sat left for too long, fenders not in the right places. Um, anyone that knows Nelson's will know that they are built really, really well. Yeah. Very thick, lots of ribs. Um, and obviously this was a police boat, so it, you know, it had a good pedigree. Yeah. But, um, yeah, left for too long, sadly. So we've repaired that. That was our, our first big job. Um, and then we had the mammoth task. Uh, and I don't think I'm going to be able to show you because it's all gone, but I'll send you some pictures. Yeah. We had the mammoth task of removing all of the old blue paint. Yeah. Somebody had done a really bad paint job on it, on it in the past. And, you know, me and Jack said, this deserves a good shiny paint job. Yeah. So we took off, we sanded off absolutely every inch of paint that was on it back to gel coat, back to final glass, um, and, and that showed the boat in all of its, um, I'm not going to say glory. Original glory. <laughs> in, in, in all of its, all of its kind of, um, all of its history, you know, yeah. you see so much when you take every, all the paint off, you see all the scrapes, all the dinks. So, what have we been doing for the past month? We've been sanding, filling and preparing for spraying. Yeah. And this side is now ready to go. So she's ready for her first this uh, is ready of for, paint. for gloss, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah that's going to be painted in cobalt blue. Oh, beautiful! Um, not uh, not the same uh, the same paint that would have been used in uh, in the day that it was built, um, but this isn't any old Nelson. It's a police boat, and we thought, you know, let's go for something a little bit different. Yeah. And cobalt blue is a very forgiving colour um, in comparison to Oxford blue. Yeah. So this side's ready to go. 
the port side um, you've been prepped and sanded over the next couple of days. Um, so next time you're back, this is going to have a lovely blue gloss paint job. Yeah, and it's going to look lovely. wonderful. Once that's done, we're going to focus on the defendering. So this had a, a big thick um, strip of black rubber known as defendering. Mm -hmm. um, and we took that off because it was all chunked in places and it didn't look good. And we thought, you know what, if we're going to have good paint, we've got to have good wood and good defendering. So new defendering's going on. And then we'll put our attention to the woodwork. Yeah. So you can probably see this very clever joint here. Um, everything past my hand, backwards to my hand here, was ruined. Right. It had lumps in it, it had holes in it, it was rotten. So we stripped it all off and we have put in that much, it's probably 20 foot on both sides. Yeah, that is a lot. Of thousands of pounds worth of teak. So that is all teak? It's all teak. Wow. Um, and if you know if you know anything about hardwoods, or ex exotic hardwoods, teak is extremely hard to get. So we were very lucky that we found this. Who, do, who did that? I mean, that's, that's pretty... Oh, Matt did it for us. Oh, really? Right. Yeah, so Matt's the other guy that's been working on this boat, uh, Matt Green. Um, again, very clever man. Um, he's been doing all this prepping, all this sanding, and he'll be doing the painting and he's been doing the woodwork as well. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna gonna get that painted. They'll be on to anti foul. Yeah. Um, and then you know should actually be ready to go in the water from there on. Yeah. Um, we're gonna give the top sides a light sanding and a paint. Yeah. We're not gonna go too heavy on them because you know it's white and it, it's always gonna feel the effects of the of the elements and um, and the dust in this yard particularly. Yeah. Um, but she'll look a million dollars on the outside and then we'll start to focus on the inside. Yeah, I think that's the thing, you know, a boat like this, the fact that when she's ready to go back on the water, she's gonna look pretty much like she did in her glory days, right, externally. Absolutely, she's gonna, she's gonna look a million dollars. Um, and I think out of all the Nelsons in the world, you know, Jack and I could have gone and bought a, a project that was halfway done yeah, um, but it felt really cool, and very special, to um, put something back in to a very special boat. Uh, you know, ex London police boat. Yeah, was stationed at Wapping. Um, right. We've got original pictures of her in action at Wapping, um, and that was an era of completely different boat building. Yeah, you'd never see something like this on the water for a for a government agency, especially in this country. Now. Yeah. You know, now we go for targas and lightweight boats. It was very uh, true, yeah. With very big engines. So yeah, this is a this is the the end of a of a very important part of British boat building. Yeah. So that's why we're putting the effort in on her, um, and it has been a huge amount of effort. Yeah, I um, can imagine. Yeah, you know, last huge, huge. The last time I had a boat, I had to do some sort of minor things in it. Nothing like this, and even that was an absolute pain in the backside. So the the kind of love and devotion that's gone into this already. I'm sure a lot of our viewers will be able to relate to that. Yeah, absolutely. If you're if you're if you if, if you're a boat owner or you've had a boat in the past, you'll know what it's like. You know, um, it's not easy. But, yeah. You know, we have enjoyed it, and um, I cannot wait to see her painted up in cobalt blue. Yeah, absolutely. Looking nice and glossy, um, and you know, even better than that, I can't wait to see her getting up on the plane out of the water when, when she's out on the water. It's going to be a very special day, I think. And in terms of her, I'll look forward to coming back for that. In terms yeah, of her, her power plant, what's she going to have in terms of engine? So um, engines uh, we remove from the boat to allow us uh, greater access into the bilges. Um, you know, we wanted to check that everything there was structurally good, Yeah. Um, which we've done. Um, we've given all the bilges a good a good degrease. Yeah. We've got kind of 40 years of build up of oil and grease. Yeah. So they've had a good degrease, they've been painted. We fitted new floorboards while the engines are out. So next stage is for us. We're having the engines um, cleaned down and painted. Yeah. Um, and then they're going to go back into the boat. But at the minute, they're, they're under this cover here. What are they? What engines are they? They're Perkins 3208. Right, OK. Um, so proper old school engine. Yeah. Um, they're, sorry, I'm just doubting myself. Are they 3208s? Yes, they are. We can always double check after as well. That's fine. Double check after. Yeah. Um, you know, they're proper old school engines. Um, think Moonraker, yeah, think yeah. old school Princess, RLM. They all have Perkins in. Yeah. Now you don't see them so much, but um, they're big old lumps. Yeah. Big old lumps. And it'll get this boat going really nicely. And how long before they go back in, do you think? Oh, I think we're probably looking at two weeks. About two weeks. Yeah. And in terms of the interior then, so what, what's the plan with the interior? So I'd, I'd love to take you up and show you. Obviously, uh, that's the other thing I was going to say. You, you, Marcus is... Um, Kind of trying to hobble around at the moment with a with slightly damaged leg from a, a skiing accident. Am I right? Yeah, this is my own fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I'll kind of talk you through from out here. So we've got a bulkhead here, just where the the um, the forward windows slope off there. 
and that is the forward cabin. Yeah. And when you look at it from there all the way to the, the, the bow, it is a big space. Yeah. Um, it shares that compartment is shared with the head compartment. Yeah. Um, but when we bought the boat, it had two sofas, one long one to starboard and a shorter one to port. Um, I don't know if they they put the criminals down there or something. <laughs> but, um, in the brig. Exactly, in the brig. Um, but our plan is certainly to, to put a double bed in there yeah. um, to make this a bit more of a... Well, this, this boat's never going to be a you know, go and cruise the world, go and cruise the, the country even. It's always going to be a weekend boat. Yeah, nice weekender. Nice weekend boat. So we want to make sure there's a decent bed in there. Now up here in the wheelhouse, I'm sure John will take you out there and show you. In the wheelhouse, we've got uh, got a helm seat, um, which is very comfortable, um, and you've got a good scope out. Um, and then on the starboard side, there was a navigation area which we've removed. Yeah. Because it was very poorly fitted out. Uh, but we're going to put in a galley in that area, so that would be just there. Yeah. And then you've got two long um, sort of sofas um, with storage underneath. Um, and that's for your, your, your friends to sit on if it's raining. Yeah. Of course, if it's a glorious day like it is today, then you've got a huge cockpit area, uh, aft cockpit. Um, the engine boxes make perfect seating. Yeah. Um, and even behind that, you've got more space for seating. Yeah. Um, this is the unique thing about this Nelson 34. If you know Nelsons, you know that you buy them in many different formats, many different layouts. You can get aft cabins, you can get aft cockpits. Um, the last Nelson 34 I sold was an aft cockpit but the aft cockpit was about one metre by one metre. You know, it wasn't right. a big space. This is about three metres by three metres. Yeah. So it's going to make a perfect space for angling, sitting out in the sun, um, feeling the wind in your hair. Yeah. Um, it's very unique. I don't think there's, there's, I've definitely seen one more like this, but I don't know of any more. Yeah. So um, it's certainly a, a unique one. Well, look, I mean, this, this is the sort of boat that I would love, right? Ex-police boat, go out in pretty much all the kind of conditions that you find around here, you know, off the coast of Essex, she's perfect for that. And as you say, a great weekender. Um, and that's, I guess that takes me on to the next thing that I know viewers are going to want to know. What's the plan with this? Is it, are you building it or are you kind of having this as a project to keep or to sell? What's the plan? So certainly when Jack and I bought the boat, um, we had a very romantic idea of, of keeping it um, and just using it as a boat for, for us and our partners. Um, but in reality, I've got three other boats. Yeah. Um, Jack's just bought a house. Um, Jack works month on month off, so he's only here for six months of the year. Yeah. I think it's probably going to be our, our most sensible decision, and, and the right decision for the boat is to pass it on to somebody that is going to love it more than we will be able to. Yeah. That's um, fair it, it's a boat that I, I want to see it every use. You know, I want to see it used a couple of times a month, not a couple of times a year. Yeah. Um, it would be a, a, such a shame to, to have it looking its best and then you know we never use it so we're going to be looking to, to move it on i should imagine um hopefully this summer yeah um as i say you know we're, sometimes we're working at a thousand miles an hour and sometimes we're not um, I, I think that's interesting so anyone that's watching this and like i said at the beginning of the video it got a lot of interest when i showed uh, a clip of it and i think anyone that's watching this who's interested in the journey of this boat but also potentially acquiring it what i would say stay tuned because it'd be interesting to see in the next kind of few weeks uh where we're at with it there's some very talented people here that can uh do some, some some very skilled works to a very high standard yeah so um yeah there's i mean at the minute you think oh god that's not gonna be ready in a couple of weeks time but i actually genuinely believe that in three weeks time this boat will be ready to to, to hit the water to go out on the water to go out the water and run under our own steam and look magnificent for the first time in a very long time and that'll be a, be a very special day yeah so we'll, um, we'll come back and we'll capture that we'll come back before and see what she's like once she's had a uh, yeah. lick of paint put on there so look there we have it you know you spoke you said you wanted to see more about this project uh, i hope this has given you a bit more of an insight into what's going on uh, with this fantastic nelson Make sure you subscribe to my channel and follow me on social media because I will be putting more updates on there. And remember, if you've got a boat that you're interested in buying, selling or chartering, then make sure you check out my Linktree page. You'll find the link in my bio and the link in the comments as well. So, Marcus, thanks for having us. I'm going to look forward to coming back soon. Until then, fair winds and following seas.